who um yeah, it's so annoying. Um <laughs> Welcome to Messy Conversations, um, very special and timely uh, Messy Conversations. I'm David Tripp on the AULA uh, campus, undergraduate faculty, and one of the uh, Messy Conversation OGs. Um, we're really lucky to have with us today Consuelo Flores, who will be in conversation with uh, Rosa Garza Marino um, about literary altars. Memory, Storytelling, and Dia de los Muertos. A um, lot we could say about uh, Consuelo, a for, former uh, student here at Antioch, now teaches a workshop on Day of the Dead here at Antioch. And if you're looking to uh, pad your, your fall schedule uh, with one more unit, you, there's still time to sign up for that workshop. You can sign up to up until the 27th of this month, and the workshop is on the 28th. And so we'd love to have you join. If you don't need an extra unit, but you're still curious, you can come and audit the workshop. Um, and so you've got that option as well. Um, lots of other announcements. Um, let me see, give, get this one in that um, Consuelo is also the curator of the uh, Day of the Dead celebration down at Grand Park. And you're encouraged to find your way down there over the upcoming weeks. Um, next week, uh, the ARTF, the Antioch Race uh, Task Force, um, will be joining us to uh, speak on the, or be in conversation with us, I should say, about the second annual report of the ARTF, um, which has been emailed out to everybody. Uh, so you've got a copy of that somewhere. And we encourage you to, to look through that, come to the messy conversation uh, next week. And this really is a great opportunity for you to interact directly with the task force and talk about your concerns, your, you know, what, what you think is going well, what, what, what you think needs to be worked on and so on and so forth. So we encourage you to be here for that. Um, and then before I hand it off to Rosa to get us started, uh, heavy on all of our minds and hearts are the ongoing events in Gaza. Uh, to just, um, you know, language escapes me. Uh, tragedy isn't close to what we're witnessing. Uh, and I know how deeply it's affecting the students in my classes. Uh, so we acknowledge uh, uh, that that's the circumstance in which we are meeting. And if you uh, or someone that you know uh, feel like you need somebody to, to talk to um, here at Antioch, both Asa, uh, I don't know if Asa's on, raise your hand, Asa, and Sarah Beth, who are both members of the Messy Conversations planning team, uh, said that they are, are glad to avail themselves uh, to you. So I want to get out of the way and have lots of room for our conversation today. Rosa? Yes. Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, just, just very briefly, want to tell you that uh, um, a few months ago, uh, I was talking to Consuelo about the the huge success of her workshop uh, last year, and uh, and that and, and she mentioned that 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 she she wanted to keep working on her syllabus to add the concept of literary altars. So I got very intrigued about the topic of literary altars and. Um, so we invited Consuelo to tell us more about how, it, how that works and to actually make an interactive, an interactive session so that everybody feels the altar, not just talk about the altar, right? And so, so I leave you, Consuelo, giving you the background of this. Uh, and then we start with the interactive session as soon as, as you're done with it, yeah. So who here is familiar with altars? So there are, Typically, there are three levels to an altar for those of you who are not. And the three levels are um, are such that the first level is what I call the connective tissue. That is what is representative of all that we have in common, all of us. The whole of humanity has in common. 
um, there it could be flowers, it could be food, it could be sand, it could be rocks, it could be water, it could be plants, it could be any number of things, but it's all connective tissue. It's all things that we can relate to whoever we are and whatever our background is. We see it, we understand it, we immediately connect. The second level is typical of who that person was. That's where you really get to the to the level of understanding who that person was. So you see here on, on this particular photograph that that first level, there are plants, there are flowers, there's food, um, there are utensils, there are uh, the 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 pots, the cups of water for water. Those are all things that may be uh, culturally specific, but they're they're general. There are they are utensils that we all use. There are and then the second level where the sewing machine is. That's more specific. Uh, the chair is more specific. There are rosaries. There are more specific. Um, there are it. It, you can't kind of see it in this photo, but the more specific you are, the more uh, it, with your offerings, the more you tell the story of the person you are honoring. So bus passes for my father, uh, rosaries for my mother, um, uh, the cologne that my brother used, those are all super specific to the person that we are honoring. And then the top level, which is the one that is floating, is where the photos are. The photos are, are representative, of course, of the person who you are honoring. And the higher level is the, the level that in which you are honoring. That is the the most the apex of your of your altar, the the place of honor. So what you're doing with an altar uh, is you are creating a, an in invitation to your dead, an invitation to the spirits of your dead, welcoming them back to your life, to your to their visit into into who what where you are now. Um, this is a very traditional altar the what you're seeing here. But there are other altars that we can show. I can show you with Rosa um, progressing into the other um, slides that you will be able to see. You can veer off into a mm -hmm. less traditional structure, but it's still meaningful to you. The three levels still exist. Um, go ahead, Rosa. Yeah, uh, so... Uh... The, the the literary altar concept that 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 uh, Consuelo is, is is bringing up today, it it it, it focuses on the words that that people can that's, provide, right? That's correct. So I wanted to give you a foundation of what an ofrenda slash altar is, so that you can start up your ideas percolating. Well, what is the common ground of the person that you are honoring, and then what? So what does that person how does that person connect with everybody with with you with other people what are um, the more specific items or or contributions to or identifications that that person carried with them that you can translate into words that can detail that person's life be more specific about that person's life and then you talk about the actual person. You talk about, you describe that person. And it, those components in literary altars can be, um, they can be woven into your piece. However you choose to use your words, you could start off with the description of the person and then go into the more general aspects of that person's life. Or you can start off with the um, what the contributions were and then go to the specifics of the person and end up with the general contributions. 
But the idea is that a literary altar is about that person. And there are several uh, pieces of literature. For example, The Year of Magical Thinking by, um, oh, I'm, why am I, I'm just completely blanking out on her name. Um, no, don't worry, Consuelo. We are not in a class. Don't worry. I know, but I'm uh, 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 Joan Didion. Joan Didion. And then we have some Antioch alum, Devin uh, Gal Gal Galladay, who wrote uh, uh, 10,000 Miles with My Father's Ashes. And then also Emily Rapp. Emily Rapp, The, the Still Point of the Turning World. All of these are what I consider book length literary altars. They're just really beautiful pieces of art that talk about the before and after or the during of a, a person's passing and how that person impacted us and how we as individuals can actually relate to their own personal experience because we all have some component of their lives to, to connect with. So we can go on to the first one. Um, sure. Uh, let me let me share the instructions. Uh, I think familiar people are familiar with Jamboards before. So in this case, we're gonna follow like three prompts, uh, one prompt at a time. So on screen number three of the Jamboard, right now we're on screen number two. I'm gonna share the, the screen uh, link in a moment. So you're gonna go directly to screen number three using this these uh, arrows when you are there. Uh, in order to create a sticky, you go uh, to this icon to the left, right, your sticky, save it, and it's gonna be there. And right now I'm gonna cancel it, so because we don't need it there. So these are three examples of the stickies with their corresponding prompt. In case you need to refer to them, come to, 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 to screen number two. But basically, it's about distilling into words. The the using three minutes for each sticky for each section. So console so, is gonna be. Yes, we want, I want you to distill your memories of whoever it is that you want to remember, whoever it is that you want to honor with your words into words, and so each of you will have to, you all have three minutes to to write concise notes in response to the prompt. So in the next screen, so if we can go to the next screen, Rosa. So describe in three words your departed loved one. Like in three words, what is the, the those three words have to be very precise. And for example, my mother uh, would be... Uh, family cooking and gardening those would be my three words to describe my mother so it doesn't have to be the in the same area but these are prompts these are you can what i would call um digging deep you can drill down with each one so what does it mean for family what does it mean for cooking what does it mean for gardening those were all be you can drill down on all of those concepts and describe what that meant but three words describe in three words that person who you loved or who you want to uh, remember in these words or through these words.
We've got about 30 seconds. Okay, so if we can wrap up and we can move on to the next slide, Rosa. You're muted, Rosa. I try to mute my dog and myself at the same time. So okay. if Rosa, <laughs> Rosa or Nabi, we can uh, add Jennifer's uh, three words. What are the three words from I've got it. I've got it. Yeah. Okay, Asa, good. Asa, thank, yeah. thank you, David. Um, or Asa. So, so Consuela, would you comment on one of the stickies or I, I want to go to the next slide and then come back to all of the stickies. Is that okay? Sure, of course. So let's go to the next prompt, guys. Ready? So the it's... next the next prompt is three of your loved ones' favorite situations objects, settings, or foods. It could be a trip to Hawaii. Uh, it could be uh, green chili uh, or pozole. It could be, and these are mine. It could be um, uh, a plumeria plant. Anything that you, when you think of that object or a situation or a setting or a food, you immediately think, oh, that person, that person, I wish that person was here or that person could have really appreciated this or, you know, those, those objects, situations, settings, or foods. So you, we have three minutes again. Oh my God, Consuelo, now I understand what the literary altar is. I have examples. Wow. We have a few seconds left. So you want to wrap up?
Can someone put Jennifer's poetry night fireball? fireball? And Rosa, Lisa Munoz has sent you two. Yes. Oh, okay, yes. Thank you. And we're going <laughs> to move forward. Write. I have a, it's a commissioned sticky that I'm going to write. Okay, and there are two. I think you see Panama. Panama. <laughs> And the, the one from before, so I don't know if you can go back and put that sticky from the one from before. Yes, I did. I think I said it. Okay, perfect. So we can move to the third prompt. There we go. And the third prompt is something, anything, that when you see it or hear it or even just think of it, you can even dream about it, but it immediately reminds you of who that person was. So for me, the smell of tamales during Christmas immediately reminds me of my mom. For me, the, the sound of, of a waltz, the, especially the blue Danube waltz, immediately reminds me of my father. And... Mm -hmm. For me, the um, anything that's going on in the world politically in which social justice is prominent or the need for social justice is prominent immediately reminds me of my brother. So those are the things. It could be a thing. It could be a scent. It could be a sound. It could be um, an event. Those Those are are what remind you. I missed the one from your dad, Consuelo. Can you repeat the words that you had for your dad, the memory? Uh, my father is the immediately. I remember uh, him when I hear the Blue Danube waltz. Blue Danube. Blue Danube. Ah, Danube. Danube azul. Yes, Danubio Azul. Let's put it in Spanish. Danubio Azul. <clears throat> Excellent. Thank you. We have more here. Hummingbirds, oatmeal, oatmeal cookies, everything but the girl. Uh, so that's Lisa Munoz again. Let me copy and paste. Hummingbirds for me too, for my brother, orchids for my mother. Any kind of vegetable growing in a garden, my father. Oh gosh. Those are all examples so Jennifer is Alebrijes and Pai Alexander Jazz Steel Pan and Murray's Pomade Steel what? Ah, Steel Pan It's on the It's on yeah, the sorry. It's Okay <laughs> So you start getting an idea of who these people were. Yeah. And when I tell people, when I talk about altars, is that it's a very bittersweet phenomenon. It really is. 
because you get to know people on a much more intimate basis, people who are no longer here. And oftentimes you get to know them after they're they're gone and you don't meet them while they are alive, but you meet them through the actions and the the altars that you see created in their honor. So we are we can move on to the next. So what I would like to do is I would like to have a volunteer identify their three sticky notes and talk about how you can elaborate on each of these words so you can raise your hand or you can put it in the chat So I'm going to volunteer myself so that oh, maybe others would follow. Uh, I started, I, I use this as examples. That's my father. My father passed away last year. So the three words that I chose, and Jennifer, I think your dad and my dad would hang, hang out very well. My dad was very bold, funny, and generous. Those are the three words that remind me of my dad. So the, the other sticky that I would write for the second prop would be his, his favorite things. And so sunsets, music, and sweets. And, his, and, and, and every time I hear or see a harmonica, the sound of harmonica or, the, or looking at one, I immediately think of him, this immediate, immediate connection. That's my dad, that, that's a symbol of my dad. So if I had an altar, it would be a huge harmonica on the wall. And that would be, that's my dad and my six siblings would agree with me. <laughs> so that would be my way to look at my, and my, my stick is Consuelo. Let's see if other people want to share. This. So I just want to take a moment here and just acknowledge that these are three, three, and three. As we all know, in writing, this is just, no pun intended, a skeleton you dig mm -hmm. deep, you start fleshing it out you make sure that you give it more depth with each word you explain what the connection is and you give it more depth and you give it more detail and you give it more resonance to not only uh not only for yourself but for the purpose of relating that person's life in a more genuine and authentic manner so you get that whole of that person, but this is the tip of the iceberg in each of these sections. So go on, Rosa, please. Thank you. Well, let's see what people have, other, other stickies that people want to share theirs. So can I give an example of uh, what I have done in the past? Please do. Okay, so let me just pull up. Should I stop sharing? Uh, you can't. I mean, no, it's okay. Uh, so I'm gonna give um uh, an example of for of say for my mother. This I started off with my mother was stoic. My mother had family. You know, her love of family and commitment to family. And the fact that she 
um, she she maintained that she was the backbone of our family. She was everything was about feeding our family, making sure our family stayed together, loving our family. So this is what I and I learned about my mother, and those were the those were the words that I started out with. Um, through the shadows of the ga gas lamp lit bedroom, my mother saw as the blood soaked through the cloth and then the white sheeted bed and heard the anguished cries as her mother struggled to give birth and began to hemorrhage. My mother Lupe saw as her mother's once golden brown skin became a sallow yellow. The midwife called to my grandfather and he rushed in to help, but they could not stop the bleeding. My grandmother stopped pleading to God for help. Her anguished cries were, went silent, and both my grandfather and the midwife halted their efforts as they realized my grandmother was gone. I can still save the baby, the midwife declared. She turned to get a knife as my grandmother's belly rippled. No, my grandfather whispered as he blocked the midwife. What am I going to do with an infant? How am I going to raise this baby? How am I going to feed or care for it? Don't you even want to know if it was a boy or a girl, she asked. Why? What good would that do me or that baby? In his, in his grief, my grandfather knew life had to go on, that he had other children to raise and he could not allow his grief to interfere with his responsibilities no it's better the child die with his mother from the closet a frightened lupe my mother had watched as her mother's belly stopped moving and understood that the baby who would have been her sibling died she also learned from her father how to be stoic that's an example One word, stoic. How did she learn to be stoic? This is where she learned to be stoic. She, my mother was three years old. So you dig deep. If you're able to, you ask questions or you hear the stories and you make sure that you record them. But the one word is stoic. And all of this happened and she learned at a very young age, she needed to be stoic in order to survive. Does that make sense to people? So I would love for other people to share one word and, and then, or the next, you know, the, the whole of the package. The three words, the the descriptions of the departed, what resonates, what reminds you, object, place, thing. I'll jump in since nobody else has. Um, if I can, <laughs> if I can find mine, I've lost them. Um, so the, the three words, uh, so mine is my grandfather, uh, on my mother's side. Um, and the three words were, uh, hardworking angry and strong um he had a, a a really hard life um and um yeah uh and and you know what he knew to do was to work really hard uh but he 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 carried a lot of anger with him for 
all of the things that had happened to him uh, in life. Um, and he, he was the person I was closest to, or maybe the only person I was close to in, 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 in my family. Um, a really a strong guy. Uh, the second one was the three favorite situations or objects. Um, and I mentioned uh, his 64 red Chevy pickup, mm. which was his work truck. Uh, he was a ditch digger, literally a ditch digger, uh, and irrigated people's, uh, wealthy people's homes. Uh, and uh, yeah, when he was in his truck, uh, all all was right in some some way. He had a garage uh, behind this tiny little house, and he you know, was always working in there, repairing tools and and things. And then when he did get to rest, uh, he was always parked in his green uh, recliner, probably listening to country western music uh, or watching. Um, you know, the Porter Wagner show on TV or something. Um, so those three things. Um, and then the last one was, uh, we were asked to do one thing and I vacillated. Um, what I, what I chose was, I don't know if you can see it, but is his change purse, which he always carried with him. Uh, and I have with me almost all the time. Um, the, the other thing I almost chose, but I thought, I don't know, maybe this is a little too esoteric or something, but it's something I'm only noticing now in, in, in my older age, um, you know, bodies change over time. And one of the things I've noticed in the last few years is that when I'm working, Physic, doing physical work, that the smell of my sweat has changed. And it's his smell. You know, I knew him, right, when he was probably my age, um, and as a manual laborer. And and it's so bizarre to me that I'm, I'm smelling him uh, in, in ways that I wouldn't have when I was younger. So that's my share. Wow. Those are all very beautiful, David. And um, and it's not so esoteric um, as you continue to identify. And when as you get older, like I can hear myself in my my mother in me and I can also feel my mother. I have much more respect and admiration for her her ability to do things when she was in such pain because I've often been in pain and I cannot even fathom it. So you smelling your father just grandfather, showed, grand let's be clear grand I mean I'm sorry grandfather <laughs> I'm sorry I meant to say that uh you smelling that is just um it's about as we this is my take is that as we grow older we understand and identify more and more with our the elders who came before us and who re, you know whose life experiences we connected with does that make sense david yeah I would love for one more person to share we before we move on. That would be, or maybe two, that would be great. Um, Lisa? So Lisa, Lisa, Lisa is trying to share, or is going to share. Hi, yes. Thank you. Um, I chose words from my sister, Diane. And for the first three, I chose hand holding, pomegranates, and music. The postie isn't there. I think the posting wasn't in here in the second one. 
longer. That's than okay. The, the second one is there, but the first one, um, the hand holding is uh, when we were little girls and we went to nursery school, they separated the older kids from the from the younger kids. And really we were only two years apart. But I, um, I really missed her. So every day at recess, I would go to the gate that the fence that separated us and it was a chain link fence. And I would put my hand through that fence and she would hold it every single day. Well, of course, we got older, and when my sister um, was diagnosed with cancer, and during the last three months of, of her life, when we went to the hospital for the very last time, I drove her, and she put out her hand, and I grabbed it, and we had mm. hands all the way to the hospital. And during hospice, which was at her home, um, I slept in the chair next to her and we held hands every single night. And so the hand holding um, is very significant for me and that we um, were always there for each other. The second one is, is pomegranates because um, she loved pomegranates. When we first lived in La Puente, my uncle gave her a pomegranate tree which when we moved to Monterey Park, we dug it up and brought it here and it's still in our backyard. My sister has passed. And so every year um, we think of her, we have pomegranates. When I make an altar uh, for the little Suantos here at my home, we always put pomegranates on the table. And music, my sister loved, loved music, all genres. So, um, I, and I well aware of her favorite songs and artists. So I often think of her um, when I hear certain music. And so you're next, um, Vicky. Am I supposed to read all my posts? The, yeah, the next sticky so that we get so we know that she loved pomegranates. We know she loved music and and it was I found it amazingly beautiful all about the hand holding. Hello. Yes. Can you hear me, Lisa? Lisa. Uh oh, can you hear me? Did we lose Lisa? It's co comes and goes. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes, can you hear us? I'm facing her stickies because they're in the chat. Awesome. Yes, I think I'm facing this one. So this one, Lisa, is the one that you provided for the second? It's just... Okay. Um, the second is Flowers, Girl from Ipanema and Reading. My sister opened a flower shop and mm -hmm. I learned about variety of flowers from her so every flower that I see reminds me of her beauty her uniqueness um her love of of life her continual growth her um her sprouting her colorful nature her personality um the variety of of her thoughts um just the delicateness of flowers, the the strength that a flower can grow in the middle of a of a desert or the middle of sand, you know, in the cracks, um, flowers grow, and and are sustained, and 
of course, the girl from Ipanema is a, one of her favorite songs. And um, uh, it just reminds me of, of her sweetness and um, her character and um, her style. And she loved to read, loved to read. And so books also remind me of her. And the one word, I had written three, but if it's one word that I need to choose for the third postie, it's hummingbirds. Uh, when my sister um, was diagnosed, she told me that um, whenever I see a hummingbird, to remember her because it'll be her coming and seeing me, saying hi. Um, it'll be her way of fluttering around. Um, and and I have hummingbird feeders in front of my house and in my backyard. And I see them quite often. And, you know, I'm, I say hi to her. And, um, um, and that's about it. So I have a question for the group. Um, given these examples, can you see yourself connecting? I cannot hear. I see you talking, but I can't hear. I think I have to exit and I'll come right back. Thank you. Consuelo, there's a, there's a posting here uh, from... Yes, from Pia. From Pia. So um, I will read that and then we'll go on from there and hopefully Lisa will be able to come back and and join us. Yeah. So um, my dad, Hayward Alexander, passed in 2006. He was super humble, witty, and so resilient. He could cook anything but his collards, turnip greens, and coconut cake were so great that when when we prepared and eat them using his recipe today it brings tears to our eyes from the flavors he was from north carolina raised in new orleans and married my caribbean mom so he loved jazz and steel pen and all music he was a murray's pomade devotee he believed mm -hmm. in being dressed to impress he was a bright, bright light guiding us now. That's beautiful. I'm I when I read that, I, it just all of those details that you had shared before, Pia. Um, I it it made that much more sense because again, you connected the dots and you drilled down a little bit. Imagine if you were to take each sentence and give five more sentences of who your father was in those, in that context. Like what was he wearing when he cooked? What did he do when he cooked? Did he do anything special when he cooked? Uh, what does it mean that he was so resilient? Tell us, give us an example of that. So all of those things, these are just a, a tiny snapshot of what, or a still let's put it that way it's a still in what is the movie of the of that person's life so going back to um what i was going to say and i don't know if lisa did lisa join us again yes yes i'm back okay beautiful and you can hear us so all of the words that we have um, chosen to describe our, our loved ones, those, as I mentioned, are, are really just a tiny bit. Those are a drop in the bucket of who our people, who the people were in our lives. Um, you can write, as we see with um, the Year of Magical Thinking, for example, with Joan Didion. Or Emily Rapp's the, the still point of the turning world. The still point of the turning world for Emily was the story of her son who died at age three. So that was an entire book dedicated to this three-year-old child. 
all of the details. You you know about how he died or what what caused his death, but you you get the details of that impact that this child made in just the three years of his life, and how it how his mother and father um, lived through this, and what their outcome was after. Um, it's very very touching, but it's also uh, some a, a learning mechanism a teaching mechanism it's something that it helps us to process our grief it gives us an opportunity to spill it out but it also teaches other people that grieving is possible that survival from loss is possible and that it is important to be able to share this grieving process with others those around us who we love and who love us. And I was mentioning to Rosa earlier that creating altars for me, creating literary altars for me has really helped me survive not only my physical way, but very important, my mental health has has been uh, has benefited greatly from being able to process my grief creatively. Um, I, I mentioned to Rosa and uh, I lost a brother to suicide. It was super traumatic and super hard. And uh, it was, if it, it were not for my writing, for me being able to write my literary altar to my brother, to all that he was, it wasn't defined. His death should not define the person he was. It was his life. And I wanted to pay tribute to him through my literary altar. So I want that to be the same for everybody. You don't have to um, hold your grief in. You don't have to... Um, feel stifled about how do I express it? You can express it in your own words. So we have five minutes. Uh... Does anybody have any questions that I might be able to answer before we call it a day? There's this comment, Pierre. I wonder if you would like to come make your comment personally about what you think about this practice. I can read it. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. 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 Oh, okay, great. It's just this was really beautiful. This was so it was so amazing actually to hear you read out the words that I wrote um about my dad it was just phenomenal and I can see myself doing this I haven't done this before this particular practice but I would definitely want to do this and to um continue with it so I really just appreciated this this evening well thank you for that and I'm glad you participated thank you mm -hmm. Sandra, would you like to comment? Just so much appreciation for Consuelo and all of you, organizing committee. It just, uh, it, I, it provides so much. <laughs> I don't know. You're all very graceful and I really appreciate all of you too for what you share with us. And, and, it's, and also the piece, the culture, the cultural piece that is so important to honor where this, you know, is coming from. And I really just appreciate all of you today showing up in the organizing committee for allowing this. This is different and I appreciate that. Thank you so much. You're a treasure, Consuelo. Thank you. <laughs> and there are like hearts and clapping. <laughs> and Jen says this is beautiful 
I have a I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, it, just based in nothing but curiosity. Uh, I understand the practice and the tradition in terms of you know people that that we've lost, uh, people who have died, you know, friends, lovers, family. Uh, is there any part of the tradition that also speaks to more global uh, losses? So that's where social justice comes in. Uh, and yes, uh, there are many altars that are, I am, if you follow, if we can go back, Rosa, to the hanging trees. Yes, we go to the hanging trees. And I'm going to remove the sticky so that I can show them. Yeah. Oh, they hi Hold on. So altars can absolutely address um, mass shootings. I've done the Pulse Massacre in Florida. I did um, the Juarez victims, the femicides that happen in Ciudad Juarez or the border towns. Um, uh, I've done, uh, I've addressed the losses of police brutality. I've also uh, done um, the COVID-19. Um, that's my family. This is it, the, the hanging trees. Uh, if you can go. Please one. What, one more. Oh, yes. The, the, another, keep going, keep going. Right there, don't no, go back. Oh, yes. This is, sorry. That one. This is what I was looking for. Yeah. So this is the hanging trees. This is, it's actually um, not trees, but uh, the trees looked like roots to me when they were hung upside down. This is called the roots of my resistance. And uh, this, if the middle section, uh, Rosa, if you can point out the middle section that I mentioned to you before, um, the, 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 the spine, the vertebrae. These are vertebrae, yeah, guys. Those are coyote vertebrae. And I chose coyote because they're native to this country, native to this part of our country. Um, but they're also the backbone. They're the backbone of our, com our, of our society and the people that are un photographed there. They are the backbone of our society. They are the essential workers, the people who are the first responders. And these were the people who were the victims uh, and their families of COVID-19 far above and beyond the, the general population. Uh, most of them were people of color, black and brown were highly impacted. So these are the black and brown community. And so the roots of, uh, of our or my resistance are these people because therefore, the, but the grace of God go I. So it's very important to me that there is an aspect of general violence that is unnecessary, mass shootings, what's going on in Gaza right now, what's gone on in the border towns of Mexico, what's gone on in uh, even in our own backyard, you know, with uh, police brutality, as we all know, we lost one of our colleagues uh, last year to police brutality. So this is stuff that is very much part of and and self-help graphics, Day of the Dead publicly, it started off here with a uh, with a, a huge community celebration and altar to the people who we lost during the Vietnam War and the uh, August 29th uh, protest against the war in East Los Angeles. So absolutely, maybe not so much in Mexico, the altars themselves, but here, definitely. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you for that uh, response, Consuelo. I really appreciate it. Um, I want to acknowledge that it's about five o'clock and we usually formally wrap up around now, um, but we hang out for another 15 minutes. Anybody who has the time to do so. If you, I want to remind you, if you're at all able to come next week uh, when the um, Anti-Racist Task Force uh, will be joining us and be, we'll be in conversation about the work that they're doing and that we're doing. 
Um, very important conversation for us as an institution, whether you're a student, staff, faculty, administrator, uh, your voice matters and it's important in this conversation. So we encourage you to come back. And then lastly, as we shift gears to this more informal part, uh, to my, my friend Consuelo, thank you for doing this uh, and being here with us. Um, my pleasure. We we started your uh, workshop in the undergraduate st studies program last year. This will be the second year that you're doing it. And I just want to say publicly in this forum that you know Antioch doesn't have a sports team. And we don't have homecoming, but my deep hope is that um, through this work, that maybe, you know, Day of the Dead becomes our homecoming and that this becomes something that Antioch picks up and carries uh, in a, in the beautiful way that you, you bring it to us. So thank you, Consuelo. It is truly a pleasure to be here, as I mentioned earlier to Miki at earlier meaning like maybe last year. Um, but it's really important to me because Antioch has been uh, the lifeblood for my social justice philosophy. My The groundwork that, that Antioch set in me um, has really been a, a launching pad for me. And I've always had that, as I mentioned before with my brother, but uh, it was coming home so coming home having a homecoming with the dia de los muertos would be super appropriate um and the social justice aspect of it being highlighted would just be very appropriate as well and i would love 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 if anybody wants to share what they have developed later on uh through this one uh little workshop for literary altars i would love to hear it see it have it shared with me um it could be sent to my antioch email that would be great Venezuela's workshop is uh, saturday the 28th saturday the 28th and everyone is welcome Bring your friends, bring your anyone. Let's crash the Zoom. Uh, so many people show up. <laughs> the more, the merrier. Paste in your. I'm sorry, Rosa. I'm just paste in your email here. Oh, for, thank for you. Ya se nos fueron. Se van yendo. Yeah. Sí, Thank you, everyone. This was beautiful. Bye, Consuelo. Glad Bye. You were Thank I love you. you. I love you more, Mari. No, you don't. You can't. I think, I think everybody except the planning team and Maricela have left. Maricela, I think, wanted to leave, but Mari is leaving little, little by little. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, 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 that's okay. I'll call you later, Gracias. Okay. Bye. Adios.